So, as of today, both lawsuits have been settled. Now, over the last two years, I've been forced to defend my integrity uh, and my reputation in a very public setting. But hopefully this is the last time I have to do so. The ugly and contentious legal battle between former MLB pitcher Trevor Bauer and the woman who accused him of sexual assault seems to be over. But not before we learn some shocking new details. We break down how this happened and what it means with sports lawyer Dan Lust. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. Well, we haven't talked about Trevor Bauer in a while, and there is a major update there. So the former Los Angeles Dodgers pitcher has settled his legal claims with the woman who accused him of sexual assault. Now, before we get to that, let's do a little bit of a backup here. So Lindsey Hill accused Trevor Bauer of sexually assaulting her during two encounters back in 2021. He was actually suspended for a season. He was playing for the MLB. He actually went to play baseball out in Japan, currently doing that now. Now, Bauer did concede that the two engaged in rough sex, but he adamantly denied these assault allegations. He also filed a defamation lawsuit against Hill in the suit, quote, that she fabricated allegations of sexual assault against plaintiff Trevor Bauer, pursued bogus criminal and civil actions against him, made false and malicious statements about him, and generated a media blitz based on her lies. He also filed defamation lawsuits against the outlets Deadspin and The Athletic and The Athletic's former writer Molly Knight. In the lawsuit against Knight and The Athletic, Bauer, Bauer's attorneys wrote that Knight and The Athletic, quote, defamed Mr. Bauer by creating and spreading the false narrative that Mr. Bauer fractured the complainant's skull. But it seems that Bauer actually lost his lawsuit against Deadspin. The judge dismissed it. And he ended up dropping the lawsuit against The Athletic after they posted a clarification. But let's go back to this lawsuit against Ms. Hill. So Hill countersued Bauer for sexual battery and battery, even claiming that Bauer punched her in her private area. She even tried to get a restraining order against Bauer, but that was unsuccessful. The judge found that her petition was, quote, materially misleading. In a video posted after the announcement of this settlement, Bauer talked about this decision from the judge. It's extremely rare for a request for a restraining order to be denied because the standard of proof that you need to obtain one is extremely low. So you can make of that what you will. We are thrilled to announce that Law & Crime has a brand new five episode podcast out called Severed Affair, all about the gruesome murder of Shad Therion. Using Law & Crime Network's gavel to gavel coverage, Severed Affair provides an in-depth narrative all about the disturbing case of Taylor Shabiznis. Also, the Long Crime original podcast has exclusive audio and court footage that pieces together the gruesome murder. You can listen to Severed Affair now exclusively and ad-free on Wondery Plus. Join Wondery Plus at the link in the description or on Apple Podcasts. Now, you may also recall that Bauer released a video, we covered this in a previous Sidebar episode, where you can see Hill in bed with a sleeping Bauer, and she's right next to him, and she seems to be smiling. There doesn't appear to be any apparent markings or injuries on her face. And, and this video was taken supposedly hours after the alleged assault. So we have a really ugly, ugly back and forth between the two. But as I mentioned, Bauer and Hill have now reached a settlement and they are dismissing their suits with prejudice, meaning that the cases can't be refiled in the future. So let's get into this right now with sports attorney Dan Lust, who teaches at my alma mater, New York Law School, and he's also the host of the Conduct Detrimental podcast. Dan, good to see you. It's been some time since I've had you on the Sidebar podcast. Good to be back with you, Jesse. And uh, yes, I was at New York Law School last night teaching sports law, teaching this exact case. So certainly a good time to jump on with you here. And yet you never invite me, and that hurts me. And that's a topic that's, for a that's different discussion. Off, off this hurts the record, me. an invitation was made, but you know, we'll, we'll deal with that. Well, let's talk about the settlement. Um, are you surprised by it? Um, ye yes and no. I'm not surprised that a resolution was reached, Jesse, as you and I know, 99.9% .9 of cases settle. I am surprised at the terms of the settlement. So most settlements, right, include some version of an NDA, some confidentiality. No one's going to talk about the hearing. The discovery that was exchanged will never see the light of day. Right? That's number one. And number two, with a big case like this, with one high net worth individual, most of the time there is some monetary payment that goes from 
celebrity or whatever this is, whoever this high net worth individual is, to the accuser to make this case go away. Neither of the two are present here. So no non-disparagement, no confidentiality, and no money exchange. So Trevor Barrow walks away financially unscathed other than what he had to pay his lawyers and his own attorney's fees. And he can talk about the case freely. And that's what leads to the announcement yesterday. So um, I, I am surprised at the terms of the settlement, which are very rare, very unique. I'm not, I'm not quite sure of any precedent um, in terms of settlement, um, but not really surprised that the case found its way to be resolved. What does that tell you? Because if he didn't pay her one cent as part of this settlement, um, does it not signify to you that maybe her claims weren't as strong as she makes them out to be? I mean, how is it that she agreed to not to no payment? And by the way, I should be clear, she was paid. Uh, she received a $300,000 settlement from her insurance company. So she wasn't paid directly from Bauer, but she was paid by the insurance company. Why do you think she agreed to this? It's a good question, right? If you watched, uh, and Jesse, the reason that we are, we're getting together today, Trevor Bauer put out an announcement, right, that we referenced a yep. close to a four minute video that's explaining how, you know, this, uh, you know, the accuser here, essentially, you know, according to Trevor Bauer, kind of put him on a, on a victim list. There's a text that was exchanged or, or shown by Trevor Bauer purporting to say next victim, colon, a Los Angeles Dodgers pitcher, and it goes on to say he's Let, worth 51 million. You know, that's, tell you what, that's tell, you, tell you what, let's play those. So, uh, so let's show you, this is a portion of the video where Trevor Bauer, like you said, after the settlement, and this is the beginning part when he, I've never seen these text messages before, but they seem to show in his opinion, the intent of Miss Hill. Let's show that. Next victim, star pitcher for the Dodgers. A text Lindsay Hill sent to a friend before she ever even met me. What should I steal? She asked another in reference to visiting my house for the first time. The answer, take his money. So how might that work? I'm going to his house Wednesday, she said. I already have my hooks in. You know how I roll. Then after the first time we met, net worth is 51 mil, she said. Bitch, you better secure the bag, was the response. That doesn't look good. I imagine if this went to trial, that would not look good in front of a jury or a judge. It, it wouldn't. And that's to the point, Jesse, why this is surprising, why Miss Hill let this happen. These are, you know, uh, I mean, I don't know what other way to put it. These make her look terrible. So if part of the settlement, if Bauer says, I'm not paying you a dollar, she could have pushed said, hey, don't pay me a dollar, but let's put some non-disparagement agreement language in. let's put some confidentiality language. Let's put this in the past. But by Bauer getting both of these in, I'm not paying you another dollar beyond what you're getting from your insurance company. And I'm allowed to talk and say whatever I want about this case. You know, that's, I, I'm, I'm gathering that's what happened, but Miss Hill had to know that these texts don't look good. And to the point earlier, Jesse, that you raised, the only one that's really seen these texts that's outside of Mr. Hill and, and Mr. Bauer appears to be this judge in California who denied the temporary restraining order. And as you mentioned, right, the judge in that case found Miss Hill's testimony and her texts as the judge saw in that case, to be, quote, materially misleading. So we've always known there were advantageous texts to Mr. Bauer and bad texts for Mr. Hill. Very odd to get a temporary restraining order denied. The burden there is very low. So we knew the texts were bad, but I think these are even worse than we suspected. I mean, these these do paint Bauer in a good light. Um, I don't want to say a good light, but not in the negative right. light that I think many assume. And, and let's talk about that restraining order, um, because the judge in that case, and in that case, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. She said, quote, let me be clear. The injuries as shown in the photographs are terrible. She goes on to say, but petitioner had and has the right to engage in any kind of sex as a consenting adults that she wants to. Then it goes on to say she was not ambiguous about wanting rough sex. She set limits without fully considering all the consequences and respondent did not exceed the limits that petitioner set. So when he says that you know, that it's extremely rare, like you mentioned, for, for a, um, a judge to basically not grant this restraining order. Is his take on this right? He mentioned it in the video. Based on what the judge found here, that was significant. It was significant. I mean, let's, let's, what this is at the end of the day is it, it's consensual. Well, I don't want to say consensual act. It's a sexual act between two adults. The issue is it's consensual or not. So, Jesse, to the point that you just raised, we haven't seen all of the texts here, and Bauer's saying he's only releasing right. a small portion of them. So we haven't seen all of them. But the judge is insinuating, what Bauer's insinuating, we have not heard from, from Miss Lindsay Hill at all. But what this impartial picture that we have seems to show text between two individuals consenting to some form of rough sex. 
where the consensual act can go to non-consensual is hypothetically, and we don't know this to have occurred here, if Mr. Bauer at any point of time rendered Mr. Hill or Miss Hill unconscious and then performed some type of act while Miss Hill was unconscious. By law, you can't consent to certain acts while you're unconscious, even if you agreed right, to be rendered unconscious in that period of time, you still can't consent to those acts. So that's that's where we found this kind of gray middle area to be. And that's what the judge seems to be pointing out here, that she maybe consented all the way up here, but that Mr. Bauer did not cross that line if and when she was rendered unconscious, that there is a line here where the consent never, you know, never was lost. Never, Bauer never performed right. some act that she was legally incapable of consenting to. So again, that's, you have a consensual act and we never got past those bounds of permissibility why do we need a temporary restraining order? That's that's really the point. I I mean, look, we'll never know really what happened between them. Um, but I, I tell you, I, I think it's interesting. You mentioned the settlement and how I guess they're both free to say what they think about the case, which, again, seems strange if they're both if he's suing her for defamation, because after the settlement, she tells The Washington Post that her it was never about money in this lawsuit. But she said, quote, I can't stop Trevor Bauer ever. But if I make him think twice before doing that again, it's totally worth it. Now, this case was dismissed, as I said, can't be refiled. But does she have to be careful about what she says about Trevor Bauer in the future or not? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. And we have not seen the settlement agreement, but I'm sure there is language in there. And, and as there would normally be, you can't commit right actual malice. You can't commit defamation against someone. So what Bauer is saying, likely, right, it's not waiving any defenses on it. Lindsay Hill is not saying I'm not going to sue you for defamation. Maybe, maybe that language is in there, but I would imagine that Bauer and Lindsay Hill are both kind of guided by normal defamation uh, principles. You can't knowingly say something false about the other person. Bauer seems to, for lack of a better term, have the receipts here. Um, I will point out one thing, and Jesse, you, you mentioned it, right? There was this temporary restraining order. Bauer files a defamation lawsuit, and Lindsay Hill responds with a countersuit for some form of sexual assault. So just for figuring out the strategy. As we know in defamation, Jesse, you know, I know, and I'm, I'm sure the listeners know, the truth is an absolute defense to any type of defamation case. So Bauer's suing for defamation and he's saying, what you claimed about me, you said I assaulted you, is false. And you're doing so maliciously with actual knowledge. You know it's false. And Lindsey Hill, you know, that's the right move legally, say, you know what? I'm actually countersuing for assault because if I can approve, you know, prove that you assaulted me, that's the truth. And mm -hmm. that's an absolute defense that whatever you could bring. Um, I will say this just, and, and you know, I follow all these sports stories. Um, this is another analogous story in, in the sports world. Uh, Trevor Bauer here, we should mention, there's one victor, accused, accuser that we're talking about, Lindsey Hill. Uh, Major League Baseball suspended Trevor Bauer initially for two years before reducing it to one year for uh, seemingly other acts um, while he was with the you know, member of the Cleveland Indians um, you know, as a minor league affiliate. So there are other acts that Major League Baseball suspended him for. That has nothing to do, uh, seemingly, with why he was, um, you know, in this involvement with Miss Hill, right? Those, that's Miss Hill's action has nothing to do with Major League Baseball. Major League Baseball hasn't told us um, why he was suspended for two years, but there's an understanding, and it seems to be the case that those may have been related, but we don't know that for certain. Um, but why, why I bring this up here, that pu uh, punishment handed down by Major League Baseball was unprecedented. We've never seen a two-year suspension for any acts like this, and we've, we've seen domestic violence situations, we've seen uh, players shooting guns near their significant other. We've never seen a two-year suspension. So for those that are out here thinking Trevor Bauer didn't do anything wrong, Major League Baseball's findings, that Venn diagram between what Major League Baseball suspended him for and what Mrs. Hill and, and Trevor Bauer have settled for, there is some gray area, some crossover in the middle that has not been ruled upon by a court. So I just want to point out there's some uh, loose ends that have yet to be tied up. I I'm glad you mentioned that because I was going to ask you, what do you think his future is with the MLB? He's playing in Japan right now, but as a result of this settlement, uh, are they going to take him back? But it sounds like uh, that there's other issues that haven't been resolved and they might not accept him so quickly. You know, I can certainly see it both ways. Um, you know, you look in the NFL, there's a player, Deshaun Watson, who was sued by 20, uh, we'll say, massage therapists for some form of sexual assault. Trevor Bauer never filed any type of defamation case there. He's playing in, in the NFL right now. And not only is he playing, he's getting paid $230 million to play in the NFL. So there's been no adjudication in that case. Those cases are scheduled for trial. So there is a track record that's ongoing right now for a top-level athlete to be playing while a lawsuit is pending in the background. Bauer has no outstanding lawsuits at this point. There's nothing pending. So Bauer this past season played for the Yokohama Bay Stars overseas. He played decently well. It's a guy that won the Cy Young Award less than three years ago. Certainly is talented to play enough in Major League Baseball. But Jesse, to your question, the fact that this case settles and the fact that Trevor Bauer puts this thing out, 
that really maybe puts to bed one of the accusations weighed against him. So it doesn't yeah. really close the loop on everything. Um, I, I certainly think it's possible that he plays again um, in, in Major League Baseball, but this by itself does not close up all of those loose ends. There's not a neat bow tied on all of this. So should right. he, could he play in Major League Baseball again? Sure, the suspension is now over, but it's going to take a team to take a risk knowing that those loose ends are not tied up. I'm glad you mentioned that because I think a lot of people just assumed it was uh, about this, but clearly there's more at play here. Dan Lust, thanks so much for taking the time to coming on to explain all this. Appreciate it, sir. See you next time in my class, Jesse. I'm going to give you a date. I'll, and I'll be there. I'll be there. All right, everybody. That's all we have for you right now here on Sidebar. Thank you so much for joining us. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. Speak to you next time.